Now before filming this video, I did do some performance testing on the laptop in its current state, which is dirty, dusty, and well, quite frankly, not that great. I was going to do multiple games to do like a before and after, but literally GTA 5 proved to be too much for it as both our CPU and GPU instantly shot up to 100 degrees, even under maximum fan speed using a program and thermal throttled to the point of unplayability. That simply will not do. So in today's video, we're going to be opening <coughs> So in today's video, we're going to be opening this thing up, seeing how it looks on the inside, cleaning it up, making it a better gaming PC in the process, and I'm going to be showing you guys how uh, I clean laptops and stuff like that, which is not very often. I don't get a chance to get a pretty sick laptop like this one that I just smacked on the desk. So first things first, because I know it's going to annoy me, and I have a feeling that if it annoys me, it's going to annoy you. I'm going to turn off the laptop first. We're going to replace this broken tab key right here. It literally snapped in half, and I ordered an entirely new key and keycap from a laptop key replacement site. We've got a brand new tab key and we're just going to, I think. Wow, that was, okay, I thought it turned it off, but. All right, so with our laptop turned off and our replacement tab key working fine, RGB and everything, I wanna open this up and see what is going on inside. Now on the bottom, it looks like we just have a ton of Thank you, Asus. Phillips head screws. Thank you. Is it so hard to just use Phillips head in your computers? It's all I ask ever. They're usually owned by people who, let's say, will want to upgrade their soda memory or stuff like that. So it makes sense to make it easier to open. These bottom trays of laptops, these plastic trays, are usually very obnoxious to get off them, to be completely honest. So a sparger tool from someone like iFixit should do wonders to just get in there without damaging anything. You want to make absolutely sure that all of your screws are completely unscrewed. If they're captive, even better because they will stick to the bottom, but usually they won't. So you just want to make sure they're all unscrewed or out entirely. And then you just want to work around getting those plastic clips unclipped and just like that you'll be in your laptop i can see that my work is definitely cut out for me here holy crap this looks interesting oh geez i that's bad Okay, you know what? I expected this. It's pretty freaking bad in here. Let's give you guys a sneak peek, or not a sneak peek, a full peek. Here's what we've got going on in this laptop. Yeah, that looks pretty bad. And that's definitely the reason we are thermal throttling and overheating almost instantly. This is a very thin laptop. I'm going to tell you the honest to God truth. Laptops this thin. Probably shouldn't have an RTX 2060 and a 6-core, 12-thread, overclockable Intel chip. But, if you're going to have them, you need your cooling to be 100,000% efficient. So any dust in your fans, your, your heat exchangers, vapor chambers, whatever, any dust, dirt, grime, blockage, anything of any kind, will push it over the edge to that thermal throttling limit. We need to clean these fans really well because this is going to get bad if we leave it like this it looks like this has not been opened before naturally i don't think the last person who owned it would be doing any internal maintenance they obviously don't i wouldn't say they care too much about the health of their laptop considering they're smoking around it i'm not an expert see we've got two heat pipes shared by both of them that go to both fans and, and heat exchangers and then we have one heat pipe that each of them has on their own i don't know three for each and two of them are shared is not exactly ideal in my opinion first of all let's take out stuff that we can take out unfortunately they're in there with a purpose i should say 
I could take off the whole heat exchanger. You know what? That's what I think I'm going to do. If we're going to refurb a laptop, we're going to refurb a laptop. I'm going to take off the whole freaking heat sink of this thing. Mostly because I want to see what's going on and which ones are CPU and which ones are GPU. Ooh, non-captive screws. I don't like that one bit. I don't like that one bit. Not, not at all. Clearly very stuck to the board. Seems like I'm gonna have a lot of stuff to re repaste. Oh, wow. That is so much dirt. Oh, man. Yeah, I I thought about trying to clean it, you know, just taking some alcohol to it while it's installed. There's no way. I mean, look at that. You got dirt hanging. This is, oh, yeah, no, that had to come out. We're going to leave that this way. I don't know what specific paste slash pads they're using it's old now this gets very interesting let's get these fans out so that we can properly clean them oh man that is that is gnarly yeah it's left like a, a bunch of dust marks on the board itself on the back of the top yeah this is gonna be this is going to be a full service. I will be genuinely impressed with myself if I can somehow get this to function when I'm done. Assuming I don't break this fan cable here. Better get started then. First thing I'm going to do is compressed air and wipe down this area right here. And I'm going to go literally outside to do that. And we're just going to really try to get in there and just get some of this grime out. I don't have the exact tool I need here, so I'm just going to go in with some precision needle nose plier work and try to get all this crap out. Looking a little bit better. Again, that was arguably a little bit pointless. It's really unnecessary to clean like every crevice, but I'm going to do it. Now these fans are going to be a whole nother monster. We want to move this over as far as we can. And we want to get right in. Right onto one of these fans. This is going to get complicated quickly. These are disgusting. But you take your fan take your fan and you just really get in there my god yeah that's terrible let's go and dry first just You know, just to give you guys a good view of this, I know, again, I wish I had the overhead and stuff, but I can't afford it. Uh, just to give you guys a good view of this, after all that cleaning, I took it I, I took it apart, and we're still, there's just crap all over this thing. This is, this is disgusting, and it's all sticky and gross. Oh, man. See, you can't just trust 
looks from the outside. There's just Hey, it looks hell of a lot better than it did before, but we are definitely still not done. Definitely a, a long process, but after all that, our fans are definitely a lot cleaner than they were before. They're not ideal. They're not as flawless as I want them to be, but they're about as good as I could get. I mean, look at the before and after on this one. So yeah, still a little dust. Uh, I'm going to take these out and... Uh, put some compressed air through them one more time but besides that honestly they're looking pretty good almost ready to go back in our system which is super awesome guys all right now that we're done with the fans we're going to move on with this to our heat sink assembly this thing is going to be actually not too bad it's pretty it's as simple as a McGovern and the napkin has been the most unorganized workspace on the planet. <sighs> just gotta remove these giant heaps of just, oh god, I don't even wanna know what some of this stuff is, it's just tar and dust and crap. But it is, I mean, you can see it. It's kind of lacking, I would say. I mean, it's got paste and pads for all the things that are important on here. But it really is just, I don't know, kind of lacking here. I feel like we could have gone for one or two more heat pipes on each, on each component. Although I am not a professional manufacturer, so I'm assuming Asus has legitimate reasons besides just cutting costs, right? right all right so we're actually i don't want to say making good times it's been very slow i have a very as you see unorganized workspace but i am again really trying with this laptop in interior is clean our fans uh reinstall everything and try the system i think um yeah no i think that'll be everything so uh yeah again sorry for the totally unorganized workspace in this whole just, sorry for the whole video but uh I'm gonna give this a little bit of dry, I'll finish up the last bit of cleaning and then we'll put this thing together to put this thing together together and uh, we'll see how it runs after all this. If it doesn't run better, I'm going to cry. But I, I don't think I don't know how it couldn't. You know, this thing should be brand spanking new right now. So I'll see you guys in a minute. Alright, in all honesty, it's been three days. I haven't had a chance to work on this for the past, well, three days. Uh, I did Put the fans back in just because i the screws are tiny and i don't want to lose them so those are back in and now i'm going to get the rest of the pc back together so i have taken apart not a ton but a good couple of laptops before and this one has probably been the most complicated now these hinges can come down which will actually hold our cooler on i'm holistically not a fan of this entire hinge system design but that's fine that's a good sign now we got to screw everything on there is a legitimate order written on the board. It's actually written on the cooler of where the screws on the both CPU and GPU, which order they should be screwed in for the right mounting pressure. This is going to get really complicated too really soon because I did not properly organize my screws. There are ones that I thought were the same, so I put them together. Turns out they were not the same size. They do not appear to be the same size. They are slightly different, which is could potentially be an issue. Good enough.
All right, moment of truth. Here we go. Does it still function, or am I going to have to acquire a new laptop? <sighs> we have a light. Let's find out. Alright, we're in game, running GTA 5, high settings, and, oh, we went from instantly overheating, I wonder what our bottleneck is here, because like we're not maxed out on either our CPU or graphics card here. But we went from, actually it's probably our CPU, maxing out 100 degrees, 100 degrees on both our CPU and GPU. Wow, this game actually looks really amazing. I can't tell if it's the IPS display or the fact that we are literally playing at maximum possible settings. Like, holy crap, That is this is a good look at those reflections. To now, our CPU is hot because, well, Intel laptop chips. Quite frankly, I don't think this is out of the ordinary for this specific CPU or this laptop because of the very lackluster cooler within it. But our GPU is at a solid 78 degrees Celsius, which is not great for like a desktop GPU or anything, but for in a laptop, given the cooling system it had in it, I... Uh don't think we can complain too much. We're getting well above 60 FPS, 70 FPS, and again, maximum possible settings. I'm going to check the performance results for it, and if it lines up with what is typical for this laptop, I will not change a thing. If there's something wrong here, I will open it up. Maybe I'll, I'll repaste again and make sure we've got proper mounting pressure. But besides that, this went from a brick to actually quite usable. You know, although our CPU is very hot and, I hate to say it, is mildly thermal throttling because of the aggressive throttling power and thermal wise that this CPU is, let me choose so I'm playing and talking at the same time. We are still getting 100 plus FPS with our graphics card actually capping out, uh, what it seems like to be capping out our FPS at a lot of points. 